Hi handsome and welcome to my 27th video. This video is going to be special for two different reasons. First of all, I did most of this video live on Twitch, which is something I have never done before and it was a new challenge for me. The second reason, which also influenced the first one, is that this is a remaster slash remake slash re-upload of my first ever video I put out on YouTube. Originally, my plan was for the re-upload to be just an increased audio, but I shortly found out that the tier list didn't make that much sense and that I also didn't include many items from the cash shop in the first place and some items got changed or added. So a simple re-upload wouldn't be a great choice. But enough of me yapping, let me pass the mic to my streaming self and he will explain it all to you better than I can. We have an entirely new tier list based on entirely new metric. I am first going to explain how this works. As you can see, we have basically two categories and three subcategories for every category. First we have universal very good value. This means things that are going to help you throughout BDO no matter what kind of activity you do. And they are very good value which means you are spending your money well and you are definitely not wasting your money if you do decide to purchase this. Some people may say that if you want to buy anything in the cash shop these things should be the first things that you should look for and after them you can buy other stuff if you want to then we have the same very good value but specific so these would be things that if you do that activity you might consider once again a must buy not always but they will be very good value for you but if you don't want to do that activity they are not going to be that important to you same we have once again universal so this is going to be decent value which means it's not a waste of money but it's not really great use of it either and it's really up to you if you want to buy them or not. This will be really your personal preference. Same goes for specific. Yeah, again, things that will have specific uses. And you can buy them if you feel like buying them, but they are not a necessity. And then we have bad value. So things that, okay, you might still get an advantage, some sort of convenience, maybe some sort of a buff but they are like the last things you should really consider buying if you have bought like the other things already and you still want to buy something else then maybe you can buy these items but outside of that i would not really recommend buying these really only buy them if you are sure you want to buy them and this goes doubly so for the specific ones if you really like a certain activity that is tied to that item then you can buy that but it's still not going to be advisable to do so after this, we have cosmetics, that's pretty self-explanatory. Things that don't have any real benefit, even if they might have a small one. Benefits that don't really matter, and at the end of the day, you are buying it for the looks. You are not buying the item because of the benefit. And finally, we have don't waste your money. These are items that you should not buy under any circumstance, no matter what do not buy these items yeah they are i want to say a scam most of the time they are definitely not worth buying at all so that's the explanation done let's start with universal and very good value and here i have only two things that i would really consider very good value that will help you in the entire game one of them is the value pack which is the subscription for the game you can think, think of this as like the subscription for the MMO. So like instead of having a subscription to just play the game, you can buy the value pack. It gives you a lot of bonuses. It gives you a lot of inventory space, storage space, gives you weight. Very important is that it lowers the tax in the central market. So when you sell things on the central market, you will get more money from that. So that's also very important. And it also has some other bonuses as well uh, that you may find useful, but they are just extra bonuses. It also allows you, this is one thing that kind of matters later on in the video, we will get there. This allows you to customize your character. So change the appearance, dye your outfits, etc. The second item you might already also know if you are a BDO player, and it is the tent. Now, many people think that this tent is specific and you cannot get the tent itself as a free-to-play player. That is not true. You can definitely get the tent as free-to-play, but it's not going to be the same. The big difference is that you will not have access to the villa buffs remotely and you will always have to go to the specific villa to buy the buff. With the tent, you can do this remotely as long as you have the invitation or as long as you have the old moon subscription, where you don't even need the invitation at all. Outside of this, repair is possible to do as free to play, but you need to create an anvil and the anvil only lasts 24 hours and the shop 
lasts a week in the shop you can buy from a merchant. Umbra in chat tells us that Ted offers 5 hour villa buff, but at the villa itself you can get a 3 hour one. That's another, I guess, another disadvantage of not paying for it. Now the tent is quite expensive. I think it's like $50 in like real cash money. So I'm going to preface everything that I say in that you don't need to buy anything, yeah? None of these items should be considered as mandatory. You can play the game completely for free and enjoy the game completely for free. And even these items that I put at the top are still things that, okay, yes, they will improve your gameplay, but you can play without them just fine. It's not like the game is going to be impossible to play or that it's going to be terrible to play without this. So I, I would say that, which leads me to the next point, Always, as long as you can, buy 1 plus 1 pearl boxes, which will, in fact, make everything 50% cheaper because you will get twice as many pearls for your money. And try to wait for sales. Try to wait for, like, specific sales. So if you want to buy the tent, wait for the tent sale. Try to wait for, like, coupons that will allow you to buy them for cheaper. Always try to wait. Spend your money wisely. Which leaves us to the next category, specific and very good value. Here, it's mostly going to be life skilling stuff. If you don't like the life skills, you will not need this. Yeah? The very first one is going to be Kanapi outfit. This will remove 2 seconds of cooking time from every single cooking that you do, which if you want to do slow cooking, brings your cooking from around 4 seconds to around 2. You can get below 2, but it's kind of hard to do in the game. You cannot get below 2 without the Kanapi outfit at all, unless there is like an event or something going on. So usually it's going to, in effect, half your slow cooking time. So this is very, very good value. I would definitely recommend this if you want to cook. If you don't want to cook, don't care about it. Then the next one is also going to be quite interesting and it's the diving outfit. It's very specific. There are very few people who enjoy underwater gathering. But if you do enjoy underwater gathering, if you are one of those people, then the shark outfit is very good. It makes your swimming speed faster. It gives you underwater breath. And it, I believe it does something else that I am forgetting now. Oh yeah, it gives you less stamina consumption. Yeah, that's the other thing. This is what happens. I don't know if you do know. In swimming, you lose stamina. Once you lose stamina, you are GG. You need to go to the surface, right? Otherwise, you cannot swim. So, underwater gathering out with absolutely goated. But it has a very specific use. Next one that is very good value. Although I, maybe not as much anymore. Maybe you could put this at decent value as well. I would say is the Hedgehog. The Hedgehog is still pretty good. What this does is it gives you more gathering materials from gathering. So if you are gathering meat, you get more meat. If you are gathering sap, etc. You get, you get more stuff. It basically has its own RNG that it, it, it rolls. And when it gets it, you, you get it as well. You can get rare materials as well. You can get enhancement materials as well. Even if you do the mana pot grind in Navarn step, you can get more pity pieces because you have the hedgehog. Now, what most people will tell you is that it will double or like it will improve your gathering by like 50%. This is not the case. The hedgehog does not scale with mastery. So if you have 2000 mastery or even close to 2000, like 1800, 1600 mastery in gathering, the hedgehog, I would say goes down. I mean, if, yeah, if you have, if you have more mastery, it's still very good value. To me, I think it's still very good, so th that's where I'm going to put it. But you can definitely argue for it to be just decent value, because you will only, in case you don't know, you only get 2 to 4 as base, 2 to 4 of any given material, like base material, and the Hedgehog will always give you 2 to 4 of those, right? You will not be getting like 10 basic materials from the Hedgehog. The Hedgehog does not scale with Master at all, like I said. Okay, next one that is very good value, I would still say, is the Fence. This is a very new addition, this wasn't in my old video. Every single fence that you buy saves you 10 contribution points. Which, especially if you are life skilling and if you want to get your worker empire going and you want other stuff to use your CP on, like storages, worker lodgings, etc. Saving 10 contribution points per fence is very important. If you don't do farming, you can completely forget about this. And you can only buy 8, which means you still need to get 2 fences from the quest, but still it's, if you buy all of them, it's 80 contribution points, which is an insane number of contribution points to save. Now, is there anything else that I would consider to be very good value? I don't think so. I would not put anything else in very good value. So I think we can move on and we can start with universal and decent value. This is going to be the horn for your horse, which allows you to pull your horse from anywhere. Important to note, this is character specific. So 
if you buy it make sure it's on your character that you want to use it on otherwise you will have to buy it again so that's why it's not very good value if this was for every single character if this was family wide it would go up to very good value but it, since it's a character based it's only decent value to me next thing that i think is decent value are the artisan memories what these do is that they allow you to save on memory fragments that you need to repair your gear and instead of using one to repair one durability you will now be using one memory fragment to repair five durabilities which effectively means you save four memory fragments per repair good value for the money but if it, it's no i should actually put this down now that i think about it i should put it to specific i should put it to specific because if you don't enhance this is kind of worthless to me right if you don't enhance you don't really need to repair gear that much so I'm gonna put this down to specific. This is this is my my own thing. You can tell this is unscripted. Next one is mates. Mates are good value. Also really depends on what kind of pack slash bundle you get the artisans from. That is true as well. Yes, the artisans have different bundles. Thank you, JD from chat for pointing this out. They have different values for the different bundles. You cannot, you can kind of buy them on their own, but it's not gonna be that good. So. The better deal you can get on them, the better value they will be. But again, if you don't enhance, if you just don't like enhancing and you just like buying your gear, it's definitely more specific. I would not put it at universal. So let's talk about mates. With mates, they are still good value. You will need a lot of mates specifically for certain parts of the game. And they are also very nice to have because it allows you to transfer gear between characters. It allows you to just be more lazy with your inventory management. So in this sense, it's decent value and it's universal. Why I don't put it at very good value once again is that the game gives you quite a lot of them, or at least it gives you enough of them for you to not feel like you need to buy more. What you need to do most of the time if you need more mates is just wait. Wait for some events, wait for some deal. You can also get some from Twitch drops, you know, if you want to watch Twitch. So there is a lot of ways to get mates outside of just buying them. But if you want, just want more mates for whatever reason, it's always nice to have. But you, you don't need them, once again. Next thing that is universally decent value, I would say is weight. It's not as good as it used to be. I would even say that it's a little bit more specific nowadays and it's more specific to life skills but even within life skills you have multiple places where you can use them right you can use them in gathering you can use them in cooking you can use them in alchemy you can still use them in grinding like some spots still require a little bit more weight and you will definitely not cry for buying more weight you will not regret buying more weight so it's definitely a decent purchase i would not really overdo it just buy however much you feel like you might need again important to point out you can buy some weight from loyalties i think it's up to 200 more weight and you can also get more weight by just training your character or getting the juices from your guild if you have if you are inside the guild just steal their juices from their storage, yeah? And and use them. <laughs> or just get, get those juices outside. The game hands those juices all the time that you can get. Next, what is universally decent value, I would say, is, 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 is storage space as well. You don't really need storage as much, but I would still say that if you buy more storage, you will not regret it. Especially the newer into the game you are. If you are more new into the game, you will need the storage more. If you are more end game uh, so if you are like me for example or if you just like played the game a little bit more and you have like unlocked all of the cities and you have more contribution point to be able to spend them on like storages in and houses in in cities you might not need this as much and it also kind of depends on which city uh, because some cities are really terrible in terms of contribution point value so like Duvenkrun and Gamma Sylvia are really terrible in terms of how much contribution you need to spend to get storage so in those it's better outside of them and if you are an older player it probably will move down so this can fluctuate i would still say it's decent value akomi says he doesn't value storage at all you can see this guy is not a life skiller <laughs> okay next thing that is decent value is the fox it gives you up to five percent item drop rate item drop rate is always nice to have but if you don't have the fox you don't have to worry about it what's also good to know is that you can buy the fox from the central market for silver so you don't have to buy this with your cash either but it might not be as easy to get especially if you are like on eu servers which we are 
or at least I am. It really depends. You have a lot of storage space for free and even more if you consider other characters. That's exactly what I said, Komi. Uh, that's exactly what I said. It really depends on how far into the game you are. The, far the farther into the game you are, the less valuable the storage becomes, right? If you are like me, if you are like you, the storage is bad value. If you are a new-ish player, the storage is decent value. And it also, it depends on the cities, right? Land of the Morning Light, for example, is very good on the value of contribution point to how much storage you get. Some other cities are not. So, it, also, it all depends. It all depends. Okay, what else do we have here that we could put into decent value? I think uh, we could put... Well, this is the wrong one. It should be this, yeah? Well, maybe maybe it should be this, yeah? It's gonna be the cosmetics, premium outfits, buying them for silver. So you buy these from the cash shop and you sell them on the central market for silver. Uh, Komi is saying that doesn't matter since Magnus exists, then it's just total space. That is true, but it's still problematic if you want, like, for example, workers. If you have workers around, those workers might still be problematic for you. And again, like I said, it depends on how far you are. If you have level 40 workers, they can gather to it to whatever you want. If you don't have level 40 workers, it's a bit more hard to do. And it also depends if you have the value pack. Because if you don't have the value pack, you need 16 inventory space. I mean, you, ha you have 16 storage space, right? You have 16 storage space in every single city. 16, to me, is not that much. I still think that it's decent value, especially if you are a newer player. What if you just put all the of the workers in a general large storage? Which one is that? Calfion or Heidel, which are easier to max. You can do that, but again, it depends how far into the game you are. I don't think we can really say that much more about this. So yeah, we were uh, with the outfits. So selling outfits for silver. If you sell out outfits for silver, obviously you're gonna get universal value because the silver can be used for anything. So I think that's just decent value. The silver you make is not that much. And this is something that people also miss when they talk about this. Is that there is a limit to how many pearl items you can sell. I can You cannot see it. There's a limit to how many items you can sell based on how much family fame you have. And it goes up to 35 per week. So you cannot just get your millionaire's wallet and buy everything within the like first two hours of playing the game. That's not how this works. You are limited, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, this is this is what not that many people talk about when they talk about selling items for silver. You can only sell a limited amount. But if you do, it's still good value, right? It's still good value, it's up to you. You will definitely be able to skip through the early grind at, at the very least. Is there anything else that we could consider decent value and universal? I would say that maybe you could consider the crystals. Crystal inventory slot. At least a couple. You don't, have, you don't need to buy all of these, but at least a couple. Because especially for me, when I do life skills and I do grinding as well, I don't feel like I have enough crystals. And if you want to do like PvP as well on top of that, you will definitely not have enough crystal slots. So I, I would definitely recommend at least a couple. You don't have to buy all of them, but at least a couple I would, I would maybe recommend. I think it's decent value. Anything else? I think that's basically it. I think that's basically it. Maybe you could you could say the Black Spirit Pass, but I think the Black Spirit Pass is bad value. I don't think it's that good. <laughs> Maybe same for the daily, daily Spirit Pass as well. We'll get to it. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, so specific and decent value. We already have the Artisan Memories. I might as well put Cronstones right next to them. Again, if you don't enhance, this will just lay around in your inventory with nothing to do. If you don't like enhancing, if you don't like the gambling in video, just make sure to like never touch this. So there's that. Next specific decent value I would say is the riding outfit. If you like to train mounts, the outfit might help you. It's gonna it's gonna help them grow faster. It's gonna help you get better EXP, but outside of that, it's not that important. Next, we have the second subscription of BDO, which is the Kama Sylvia's Blessing. What this does, it does two things that are kind of specific. It gives you 20% drop rate. Okay, that's 
more universal, but still it's decent value. I wouldn't put it higher. But the reason you buy this is because of the energy recovery. It gives you plus two energy recovery, which if you do gathering or if you do life skilling in general, you are going to want. It also gives you more weight in your central market, which is nice to have, but you don't really need it. You really buy this just for the energy recovery and basically nothing else. It's not that important outside of it. I don't buy this myself. As a, as a person who would consider himself a life skiller and a gatherer, I do not buy this. I feel like this is, this is very specific. If you want that, you can get it. If you don't, you don't have to. Next up, we have the maid outfit. Which just allows you to process items from your storage and it also gives you some processing EXP. If you don't do processing, you don't need this at all. If you do processing, it's still not that great. It's not on the level of canape. Nowhere near on the level of canape. It's just a small quality of life feature that will allow you to spend a little bit more time AFK when you process. I have this outfit myself. What I use it on usually is when I want to grind flour or I want to get cheese or like some stuff that is very light and I just do it overnight. That's what I do with it. Now, same is going to be worker lodging. Worker lodging, if you want more workers, is obviously good for you. Not everyone is into the worker empire stuff. You could put it into more universal, you are still going to need it anyway. Most of the time, the workers, what can get, what they can get you in a day is not that much money, even if you get a lot of them. For me, I find this very helpful if you want to do trading crates, if you want to do life skills, especially if you want to do cooking and if you want to do processing. Those are the like more important things for me that I would buy workers for. And again, this does depend on where the lodgings are. Some lodgings are incredibly hard to get, like Kama Sylvia is bad, Duvenkrun is bad, Arehaza is terrible, even places like Odraxia is not that good. Some places you can't even get more workers at outside of this, such as the Old Wisdom Tree. Yeah, Old Wisdom Tree is this place. You cannot buy more workers because there are no houses for them, but you can still get workers here for some reason. So, so it also depends on where you are buying these workers. In some places, like Land of the Morning Light, this will go to bad value. Yeah. In some places, they are better value than others. So keep that in mind. Make sure you know where you are buying them and that you need them. I would also put the coupon here into specific. And it's specific mostly for a couple of life skills. So hunting is pretty good and some other life skills are also quite good with this. If you, if you use this on any other cosmetic that is from the pearl shop, you will unlock a crystal slot. And the crystal slot can give you either plus one movement speed, plus one critical or one thing that I don't remember because it's probably useless. If I don't remember it, it's not good, is it? Okay, what else is there that we could say is specific and decent value? I kind of want to say the Karak skins, but with their price, those being like $60 or $60 USD, I want to put them at bad value. Because buying, six, buying a skin for $60 just to get some bonuses that, okay, if you do min-max, you might still want. But $60 is just way too much. So I'm gonna put it actually at bad value. We might as well keep it there. Which I think leaves us with the with the Agris outfit for farming. I don't have this myself. I don't think it's really that great. But if you just want to farm faster, collect your crop faster and do other things faster, then it's definitely worth a purchase. And I think that's gonna be it. I'm thinking that maybe the Nadir's band should go to specific decent value as well. But this allows you to store more fail stacks outside of characters. So I think this, this should be good as well here. If you want to enhance, once again, it's very specific to enhancing. I think that's it. So next we have universal bad value. I'm gonna put the character slots. At the very least, the character slots, if they are 
full price. Sometimes you can, you can get them for half. I would say getting them for full price is not that good. You can get a character slot every month for 10,000 loyalties. Not always will you have those 10,000 loyalties, I understand. You also start with 6 character slots to begin with and I think that's fine. You will, you will eventually get more. You can all, of course always buy them, it also depends on how many characters you really want. Then we have the daily pass and the black spirit pass. This used to be better value, now they just give you more of the stuff that you can already get from the game. Uh, we don't have the daily pass anymore, but if we look at what the daily pass gives you now, it's a outfit, okay cool. It's some bonus item drop rate, who cares? Bonus items, you can just sell, who cares? item drop rate again who cares a blessing one or the other it's okay but it's not really that great processed fuel which we will get to this is a complete scam things you can basically get for free and again you can select stuff but it's complete maybe not completely wasted the value pack is okay i suppose but you can only get one from this it's not good 20 artisans memories is again specific then we have more enhancing materials you can get for free. Things you can buy from the central market and are better. Fail stacks, which you will always get for free. And some crown stones, which you can get for free. I think this is not good value. It might be good value if you like want more than one thing from here. But even then, I don't think it's very good. And the Black Spirit Pass I sadly don't have on hand. But I think it's... Basically the same. You just get more stuff that you would normally get. It's definitely not worth the purchase for me. But maybe it, it is for some people. Next we have inventory slots. I think inventory slots are not that good value anymore either. I think that inventory slots used to be much more valuable than they are now. Nowadays you get so many inventory slots. The game has also given you a newbie bag if you start the game. So you have like 50 inventory slots just for starting the game in your bag. Then you also get a bunch of inventory slots for just questing through the game. And then also we have much more storage space available because there are more cities in the game. And the Magnus is in the game as well. So inventory space is not as valuable as it used to be. So I would not recommend buying inventory space. Even if you are like a hardcore life killer and you have like 17,000 items that you need to store, you will still not need this. But if you really want to buy this, you can. Next we have the final subscription, which is the secret book of the old moon. I would not buy this ever myself. What this gives you is that it gives you EXP bonuses for combat and life, which okay, that's fine, not worth the subscription. And it also gives you... Okay, so I'm gonna show you, yeah? Combat EXP 100%. Sure, if you really want it, it's fine. Not worth the money to me. 50% for life EXP. Sure, it's a little bit more, more valuable than combat, but it's still not worth the money to me. Reset skills. Who really cares? You're not gonna be resetting them like that often anyway. Change skill add-ons. You can just buy this for silver. It's not very expensive. Completely worthless to me. Change skill preset in safe zone. Again, you can just go to an NPC and talk to them. It's gonna save you like two minutes at best, maybe five if you are like really far away for some reason. Not worth it. Buy Villa Scrolls without having Villa Invitation. We already talked about it when we talked about the tent. This is like maybe the only other thing that is worth purchasing it for. But again, it's not worth the price. One stable slot for all regions, one worth slot for all regions. Stable slot is arguably a little bit more important, especially if you do horses. Outside of that, it's completely worthless. And warp slots, I would say, is, are completely useless. You don't need that many warp slots. Unless you, like, I don't know, you want to make your own navy or something. But, like, even then, it's not worth the money. In my opinion, do not buy the secret book. At all. But, like, if you really want to buy it, yeah, this is why it's bad value. If you really want to buy it, you will still get something out of it. Something. Something you will get out of it. So, like, if you really want it, sure. Okay, next up, what do we have next? I think we could say, 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 the horse skins. They give you some bonuses. Outside of those bonuses, it's mostly cosmetics, so you could really say it's just cosmetic, but there are enough bonuses for you to consider it being a value. 
and you might consider buying it for the skins. I wouldn't really recommend it, but if you really want to, if you want to min max horses, and if you like the skins, sure, go for it. Stable slots will go here as well. I already kind of talked about this. Horses you get enough of for the stable slots to matter, but you can get around them easily. So I think that's just that. And is there anything else? Oh yeah, the crystal, the crystal restore. It just gives you one more crystal restore a year. So if you die and your crystal breaks, this will allow you to restore one more per year. If you really want that, it's not worth the money. It's extremely expensive. I think it's like, what, $25 to buy one? I think that that's terrible value. If this was like $5, maybe $10, I could see it. But at $25, it's completely ridiculous how much money they want. So do not buy this. Do not buy this under any circumstance, maybe even I would say. But like, eh. Like, I guess if you are really afraid of dying, if there's like a discount or something, like sure, sure, you could maybe buy this. It's not a complete waste of money. You still get something out of it, I, I guess. So that's about it, I think. Uh, next we have, yeah, these two things. So family inventory space and family inventory weight. I think these are kind of equally uh, valuable in the sense that they are not really that valuable at all. You can use the weight to like store more food for your workers. The inventory space you need a little bit to be able to store everything you need, but the little bit you can get for loyalties, right? The four things I would consider storing in your family inventory are mana pot, HP pot, food for your workers and feed for your pets. Those are the four things. Anything else is optional, right? You don't really need it to be there. Like if you want, I don't know, like your har harmony drafts or like perfumes or something, you can put them there, but it doesn't really matter. I think weight is a little bit more valuable in the sense that it allows you to get more things in there. But outside of that, it's still not very good value. Do we have anything, anything else, anything else? I would say maybe for the fairy, the wine, you can buy this. It's not worth the money, but it will save you some silver. It will save you some silver because you won't have to buy, be buying the wine for silver. So it's just a little bit of silver save. If you want to save more in-game currency at the cost of your real cash currency. Wine is the first, don't waste your money. Me thinks. Do you think so, Kami? Like, I think there is definitely an argument for it to be made. Don't waste your money, right? Because there is... Like, the price that you pay is not that bad, right? You you save a little bit. So, I, I guess you can... Like, if you if you want to give me an argument for this, and why it should be, don't waste your money, then I, I will I will let myself be persuaded. You can spend 600 million at once, or whatever you need for 100% fair and it's GG. I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, it, it it's very bad value, right? It's very bad value. It's still, like... I don't know, maybe if you really need those 600 million, maybe then you could say that it's it's like bad, right? Let's let's leave it here, yeah? I, I think like, I think the fairy is not that important. I would say, okay, so if the wine is don't waste your money, I think the Feyas Orb to reset your skills are still bad value, but they, they are at least a little bit more better. Or do you think that these are also don't waste your money? Because I would say that these are these are bad value, but at least I can see the value, right? If you just need one skill of your fairy, it's fine, I think. If you just need like one or two skills. By the way, it's better to just get the one skill that you want first, because then you will spend less of the orbs. The orbs consumption depends on how many skills your fairy has already learned. So keep that in mind. But I would still say that this is not really worth buying. You will save a lot more silver than this, actually. Now that I think about it, so I would say that this is bad value. Okay, so let's move to specific. So we, we have the mount skill change coupon. You get a lot of these from the game itself for free. The only way you will run out of them is either if you are a very new player and you just are doing your first horse or if you do horses a lot. I think those are the only two cases where you will run out of them and you will not be able to get them for free anymore. So they are bad value, but like if you are one of those two people, 
if you are spe like especially new or if you are into horses you might find use for that same i would say for the medallion now i don't do sailing i wish umbra was here so he could tell me a little bit more about sailing but i talked to him about this yesterday and he said that if you have more than one karak that this is good to have because otherwise you cannot have 10 sailors at a, at, on a karak right you cap at 10 sailors this allows you to get up to 40 more for five dollars per sailor which i think five dollars per sailor is theft so it's not good value but like if you really want a lot of ships and you want a lot of good ships then go for it okay so next we will have this one complete now you might be wondering what the hell this is uh, in case you don't know if you upgrade your workers if you want to promote your workers they take eight hours to promote you can skip that for pearls the amount of pearls is going to differ based on how far or like how much time has already passed either way it's not worth really to buy it unless you just want to pop off all of your workers at the same time and you don't care for your money i don't think it's good value especially when those workers can still fail even if you pay pearls for it next we have the fishing outfit i think the fishing outfit is outclassed in basically everything that it does outside of the jump height for some reason this is jump height if you want to do like flying tamer build you might need to buy this but like outside of that i don't think there is any reason to buy this in fishing it's it's called the fishing outfit all it does is give you plus one fishing how is that the fishing outfit at that point but it does make you look like a fish so like i think I think that's worth just in itself. Okay, what else do we have here? We have the training coupons that will make your horse learn all of the skills. This is a pure time saver. If you have a horse and you teach them a skill, he might not learn the skill fully on straight away. So you might have to spend some time training that skill on them. And there's like a mini game. The mini game is not that fun, to be honest. So if you want to bypass all of that, you can pay, but it's not good value. I would not recommend really doing it, especially if you just want a couple of skills, right? If you want one skill, you can get the cheaper version. If you want like four to five skills, you can get the more expensive one. If you want like two to three, I would say just try to level one or don't, don't use it at all okay next up i forgot what this is oh this is the 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 mount brandstone yeah the mount brandstone it does a lot of stuff but the only thing that's important here is that it gives your horse a higher chance to learn skills that's the only worthwhile thing it makes it like easier to recover and cheaper to recover but like we don't care about that like the, the, the amount of silver that it costs to recover a horse is basically zero you might still get a use of this but not really Next we have this, so this is the Black Spirit Essence, you use this if you want to restore a crystal from your crystal inventory without the crystal breaking. The only time you might find this useful is if you are removing a very expensive crystal like a Ultimate Macalot or like a Gearing Steer, which I don't really know why you would like remove, but maybe there are some situations where it might be useful. So in that case paying $2 for this it's not that bad. Otherwise, if it's like a cheaper crystal, just throw it away. Same goes for this. This is the Blacksmith's Book. The Blacksmith's Book lets you withdraw fail stacks from your character and put them into the Advice of Valks. That's all it does. If you don't enhance, this is going to be completely useless. If you do enhance, there will be very few situations where you will have a high enough stack that you might want to put outside of your character. So... It's still terrible value. Maybe I would put this again into don't waste your money on this. But I can see why people would like increase the rebluff and then enhance something else. I'm not I'm not really sure how it's gonna help you, but maybe it still should go into don't waste your money. But I'm not your father. You can decide for yourself if you think it's worth it. I think this I will leave for interpretation. Okay, anything else that is bad value? The horse breeding reset? Maybe? I would still say you just don't waste your money. You can just get another horse. I don't think why you should want to breed the same horse twice. Maybe you just don't want to level the same horse twice. So like, if you really don't want to level horses AFK and you want to do other things AFK, this might be worth to buy. Otherwise, I would not, I would not spend money on it. 
I don't know why I have this twice. Why I have the item burn slow twice. But I will just put it here once. And it is for a very specific reason. And there are two reasons. Put this on your fishing rod. Put this on your hunting matchlock. Don't put it on anything else unless you absolutely want to. Those are the two things that I would I would recommend. What this does, it makes those things or like anything that you put put the branding stone in or on, it makes it lose durability slower. That's all it does. And I think that is it. We have cosmetics. Uh, we could put this again. I don't I don't know why I don't have these twice. Yeah, but like any skin that you just want to buy for a skin should be a cosmetic, right? That, that makes sense. All of the pets are basically just cosmetic. It doesn't matter which one you buy outside of the fox and the hedgehog. Those are the two specific pets. There is one more. There's the otter for fishing. I don't know why I don't have it here actually. Uh, the, the fishing otter for auto fishing time is also quite good. I would put it at decent value. I don't know why I don't have it here. Otherwise the pets are all the same. They might as well be cosmetics. If you don't have all pets, just buy them from the central market. Most of the time you will be able to. It will take some time. If you don't, if you just want to buy pets to have looting, then I would say it's here. If you don't want them just for cosmetic, then I would say for looting it's bad value. Unless you are like a very new player, you don't have money to spend. In which case I would put it at decent value, right? If you are an extremely new player. But to me, I always bought my pets outside of the hedgehog which you cannot buy from the center market. I always got my pets from the center market. And I think of this as like another form of progression. If you don't think like that, you, you can put it higher. To me, it's just a cosmetic. Okay, next thing that's just a cosmetic, basically, I would say, are the mates. I would say that they are even like, don't waste your money on them. Yeah. Most of the time, you will have the mates hidden anyway. If you like watching your mate for some reason, I mean, not mate, uh, your fairy. Oh, yeah, these are your fairies. If you like watching your fairy for some reason, which like, okay. You might want to buy them for the cosmetics, otherwise, don't waste your money on them. This one, the made outfit gives you 10% processing EXP, which is uh, negligible. This one gives you death prevention, like 5%, less of a chance to break a crystal, which might be slightly better, but at the price that they ask, it's not worth the money. So just buy it for the cosmetic. Do what you need to do over your fairy, and uh, we will not talk about it anymore. Another cosmetic thing, the new one, is the emotes. Fairly self-explanatory. You don't need to do much more. Is there anything that is more cosmetic? I guess you could say that this is cosmetic. I forgot what the, what the name of this is. So I'm gonna look it up. What's the name of this? Oh, it's the... It's the Perfume of Erasure. So, Perfume of Erasure. What this does, it removes the name of the person who made your Pen Black Star. Or Pen de Boreca when you decide to buy it from the market. That's all it does. I know that some people don't like having other people's names on their gear if they buy it and they still don't want to enhance. This is your solution to it. At $10 or like 1000 pearls, this is not really worth it. So if you don't care about it, it goes straight into don't waste your money. And I think that's basically it. So what do we have here? Oh yeah, the, the camo outfit. Yeah, If you like it, you can buy it. Otherwise, it's once again here. So we have a lot of things that you should not waste your money on. First of all, let's go through the beauty tab. It's not called the beauty tab anymore. It's called the... It's called the makeover tab. Do not buy anything outside of maybe the emotes, if you like the emotes, the, the dances. Do not buy anything from here. Don't buy the Merv's palette. Don't buy the appearance change. Don't buy any of the dice. Don't do this. This is a complete, complete scam. You get the Merv's palette and you get the appearance change when you buy your value pack. Yeah, the value pack says this, use of Merv's palette for however long. So do not buy this. So you can also see unlimited customization per the down. Do not buy anything here. Do not buy any dice. Do not buy any appearances. This place should not exist. This is a complete scam. A complete scam. Let's, let's move back. So that's one thing. Another one is the compass. Why would you pay 50 pearls for a compass for two hours when you can pay like 3 million silver to get a compass for over a day? I think it's like three days, right? I think it's three days. Why would you pay, why would you pay real money for two hours of compass? This is completely worthless. It's another scam of an item. Same for the pet feed. You can buy feed from the central market for pennies. But absolutely nothing. So for, for next to zero money. What might basically be zero money? Don't buy this. Don't buy this at all. The flute is here. I don't know why it's here. Don't buy the flute. Buy the horn. The flute only raises 
you, the range to 500 units instead of 150 to cool your horse. It's the same thing as the horn, but the horn is unlimited in range. This is 500 units. I don't know why this exists. This should be removed from the from the store completely. It's another scam, once again, a scam. War slots, we've already been through them. Unless you are building your own navy for some reason, you might need them, otherwise they are completely useless. Don't waste your money on them. So this, I believe, is the storage for your residence. This allows you to reach the storage. You don't have to go to the storage keeper. You can just go to a box in your residence and you will you will get the storage from there. You can get this for contribution points, but I, I don't even know why you would really want this in the first place. So it's completely worthless to me. Another thing that you can just get for silver are the energy elixirs. Don't buy them for money. I don't know why you would ev ever do this, yeah? This thing revives your mount. Just walk to the stable keeper, okay? It's not that hard. You can also buy this for loyalties. You can also buy this for loyalties as well. The air energy portion. Now there is also a way to get 300 energy in like the land, land of the morning light wine or whatever that is. For even cheaper. I think it's like 200 loyalties for 300 energy. This is 50 pearls for 50 energy. Completely worthless. Elion tier is completely worthless one once again. It lets you revive on the spot. You will get so many of these, you will have to die like 100 times to actually make worth of this. So don't buy them. Megaphone, if you want to shamelessly plug your Twitch channel like me, you can buy this. Otherwise, they are once again useless. Experience transfer coupons, doesn't matter which experience it is, it's completely useless. Don't buy this. Same goes for the EXP, you don't need to buy the EXP, you will get enough EXP scrolls from the game for free, don't waste your money on that, most of the time the bonus EXP doesn't even stack with the one that you get for free. Next one uh, is this, uh, this lets you, it's the Tears of the Star, it lets you recover a sailor when he gets sick. You can buy an item for a couple of million silver from the central market, it's completely worthless, don't buy this, especially don't buy this for $5. Marnis Fuel. I don't know why this is here. It costs you $10 to be able to transfer or like tag one item. One item for $10. When you can have the Marnis Unstable Fuel, tag your entire equipment for less and for free. Don't buy this. This resets your fairy. Just get a new fairy. Okay? It's gonna save you a couple of million silver. It does not really matter. Don't buy this, especially not for $10 once again. This is a skill preset. You won't really need them. I don't know why you would need more than the ones that you get for free. I would say don't buy this. Changing pet skills, once again. You can maybe get some use of this if you really care about pet skills. Most of the time it's like 5% bonus for like a life skill. Maybe it does matter to you, but like I would say don't buy this. Then we have uh, this, which is like a bag. I Since I put this here, I actually forgot, but I believe this is a bag. That you can put into your inventory and it's, it's like a bag inside a bag. I would say don't buy this. Same for this. This uh, stores your gear. You can get this for free from the game. So once again, don't spend your money on this. And the last two are HP and MP scroll. Both increase your stats, so HP or MP by 100. This might have been useful in like 2017, 2018. This is definitely not useful now. When everyone is running around with like 9000 HP. And same for this. You don't really need this, yeah? Especially when we have MP potions. So yeah, th there you have it. There's all of the items. It's actually insane just how little is worth purchasing. I will just go through it once again and I will once again explain the different brackets. Just in case you have forgotten because it's been like an hour. Duck is universal, very good value. First time Chetler Tosa. That is true. <laughs> Duck is very universal and very good value. But the duck represents all of the pets. It represents all of the non-specific pets. <laughs> okay, so universal very good value. The things that if you decide to spend money on the game should be the things that you buy first. Above all of them. They will always help you. They will help you in everything that you do in the, in the game. Or almost everything that you do in the game. So if you do decide to spend money, which I will once again reiterate, you don't have to. The game is very free to play friendly. There are many people who play the game completely for free or people who spend very little money for it. Don't believe people from like videos from like 2019, 2020 who say like, oh my god, this player spent $170,000 on the game. So the game is terrible and pay to win. Don't believe them, okay? The game is completely different now than it was back then. And it's much, much 
friendlier to your wallet. And obviously, all of this is pay to win. Yeah, any advantage is pay to win, if you ask me. Yeah, so the game is still pay to win. Don't get me wrong, don't get it twisted. But it's still free to play friendly. Very free to play friendly. Okay, so there's universal good value, specific very good value. If you don't do the specific activity tied to that item, you don't need to buy any of these. But if you do, then this might be good for you. So it's the cooking outfit, underwater gathering outfit, the gathering pet, and the fences for farming. And this is the tent and the value pack, I think. So that's the subscription. Then we have universal decent value. If you buy them, it's not you're not gonna regret it, but it's still not the first thing that you should buy overall. So it's the celestial horn to call your ho horse from everywhere. It's the maid to be able to transfer your gear and items from your inventory to the storages or center market or even between characters. It's the weight for your, for your characters. It's the Arctic Fox which gives you up to 5% item drop rate. It's the storages which once again depends on where you are buying the storage and how far into the game you are. If you are a endgame player or even like a player who has played the game for a longer time, I would argue they belong to bad value. Or if you buy them in towns where the storage is not that hard to get for contribution points. This will depend, but I am I am keeping them here just so we don't have two rows in here. We have the crystal inventory slots. If you want to get more crystals, especially if you do like more types of the, of content in the game. So if you do like PvE and life skills, or you do PvE and PvP, or you do all of the three, you will need them, at least some of them. So you will not be wasting your money for this. And then we have costumes but selling them for silver silver specifically and nothing else okay silver is universal and you are not going to be reg regretting buying and selling them and if you are on eu you will make some people extremely happy so there, there's going to be some added value on top of that as well then we have specific decent value so things again good value but if you don't do it you don't need to buy it at all so we have the two things tied to enhancing which are the artisan memories and cronstones we have the riding outfit, which helps you get more EXP for training and for your mounts. We have the Kama Sylvia Blessing subscription, which is very good for the gathering. We have the maid outfit, which is quality of life and basically nothing else. We have worker lodgings. Once again, this depends on where you are buying the workers. So workers in like Duvenkrun and Grana and Arehaza and Old Wisdom Tree are more valuable than others. We have the ticket. This is... Very specific, depends on which item you are buying or which item you are making into a costume. I will recommend only doing it for the hunting gear. We have the Agris costume for farming. This removes two seconds from all of your farming. If you just want to spend less time on farming, this is good for you. Otherwise, you don't need it at all unless you want to look like a farmer. And we have the Nadir's band, which is once again tied to enhancing. And it will allow you to get more fail stacks out of, outside of your characters. Then we have universal and bad value. So things that I would generally not recommend buying. But if you do buy them, you are still getting something. So we have the character slots. You won't really need to buy that many unless you are an endgame life skiller. Or you just really want to have as many characters as you want. But if you want to have them, then it's fine. We have the daily pass and the battle pass. Both of them just give you more stuff from the cash shop. If you want to buy them, you can, otherwise I would not recommend them. We have inventory space. The game gives you so much inventory space that you will not really need this. And the game is also removing a lot of the items that have been cluttering your inventory space from the game completely. So it's much friendlier to lower inventories, okay? We have the Old Moon Book Moon subscription, the last subscription. Basically, you are buying this to get a little bit more EXP from the game. You are maybe buying this for a, for one extra stable slot from the game, from all of the cities. And that's basically it. Some quality of life for the villas and your tent. But if you don't have the tent, you obviously don't need that either. I would say that this is like the least valuable subscription for the amount of money that it asks. If you ask me personally, I would I would even put this and don't waste your money. But I still feel like if you want a little bit extra EXP, you can buy this. But you have been warned. We have mount skins, which might as well be cosmetic. Once again, might as well be cosmetic. But there are enough buffs on them that you might want to, to buy them. We have stable slots, which are very similar to basically all of that. You will have most likely enough horses for this to matter. But there are better ways to get this. We have the crystal restore 
extra, so one, one more crystal restore per year. This is extremely expensive. If this was like half as cheap, I would consider this a little bit better value. But since this costs almost $25 in real cash money, this is really expensive and you won't really need this either. Just, just don't die, okay? Skill issue. We have the two things for family inventory, so weight and inventory space. Inventory space you can get enough from loyalties to the point where you won't really need to put anything else into it. And weight is a little bit better, but I still don't think like you need it at all. And you can also buy them from loyalties as well. So that's up to you if you really feel like you need weight or maybe you just want to use your loyalties on something else. Then I would recommend doing that as well. But otherwise it's bad value. And we have the Fea Orbs, which are for your fairies. If your fairy wants to learn a specific skill, so if you have like a good fairy that you want to keep, you might want to use this, but make sure that you use it with as few skills learned as possible, because the more skills the fairy has learned, the more orbs it will require. Okay, moving on to specific and bad value, so things that you don't need at all if you don't do that thing, and if you do that thing, it might be one of the last things that you might consider purchasing. We have ship skins, which are here simply because they are so expensive, to the point where it might be one of the worst value in the game if they didn't give bonuses. So $60 for a ship skin is astronomically terrible. We have skill change coupons for mounts. If you do a lot of horsing, if you are a very new player, you might want to buy these, but outside of that, you will never need to buy them. You will have enough of them for free. Sailors, so more sailors for your ships. If you have more than one ship, specifically more than one karak, this might come in handy, but at $5 per sailor, this is simply too expensive. We have the skips for your worker promotions. Again, this is simply too expensive. You do not guarantee that the worker will actually succeed, so you might just be throwing money at the wall. We have the fishing outfit that does make you look like a fish, which is a bonus and might be the only redeeming quality of the outfit. And it gives you jump height, which if you do like some kind of meme tamer flying build or LAN flying build, you might find funny. But outside of that, it's an outfit completely outclassed by almost every quality that it has by the underwater gathering outfit. We have the training all skills on the mounts and like just skills on the mounts. If you don't want to bother with the minigame, you might want to buy this, but otherwise it's not really that important. We have the brandstone for mounts, which will make it easier for your mount to learn skills when they level up. But otherwise, you can usually just get lucky enough and you won't need to buy them. And if you do get unlucky enough that your mount does not learn a skill, you have these items. Yeah, we have the black spirit essence which restores your crystals from your crystal inventory without them vanishing into the air. You can use this for very expensive crystals or crystals that might be hard to get, but otherwise just remove that crystal. It's not that big deal. We have the blacksmith book, which gives you fail stacks and withdraws them from your the character and you can use them on something else. I don't really know why you should want this, but maybe there is a value that I don't see. And if you do a lot of enhancing, you might, you might find this useful, but probably not. We have the breeding resets for horses. Again, if you don't want to bother leveling your horses and catching new horses, you might find some use of this, but at the price it's simply not worth to do and just get a new horse. And we have the item brandstone and the item brandstone specifically for two items in the entire game. And that is your matchlock and your fishing rod, nothing else. Unless you really just don't like repairing your gear, but even then, Unless you are playing like Succession Nova or something, you will generally not need to repair your gear that often. Then we have cosmetics, which I have put all the pets and the emotes, the dancing emotes. And obviously all of the all of the outfits could be here as well if you just buy them for the looks. Yeah, that's, that's pretty obvious. And then we have everything else that you should not waste your money on under any circumstance. Okay, which is the dark wine for your fairy which you can buy from the, from the center market for quite cheap. And this is saving you a little bit of money. 
we have the two uh, fairy skins which like why would you ever buy this if your fairy is not even visible it's so small that it doesn't really matter and the bonuses that it give are quite negligible the mate outfit is even more negligible because it only works with processing and the death prevention penalty removal is only necessary if you die a lot which again skill issue this thing, it will remove the name of the person who made your pen item if you buy it from the center market. If you really care about names of different people on your gear, you might want to buy it for some reason. And if you don't want to enhance as well, right, you might want to buy it for that reason. But outside of that, it's completely useless. We have the camo outfits, which used to be really good but nowadays they are basically just cosmetic. So you can put it as cosmetic, I would still say it's not waste your money. We have the entirety of the beauty tab once again do not buy anything in there everything that you can buy in there you will get for free included in the value pack so maybe not for free but it's included in the value pack yeah you can change your appearance freely you can change your dice in your on your outfits freely if you just buy the value pack never 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 buy anything from the beauty tab this tab should not exist it's a scam we have the compass, which like, why would you ever buy a compass for two hours for real money when you can buy a compass for three days with silver? Same goes for the feed. Why would you buy feed for your pets with real money when you can buy it very easily or even make it very easily for free? We have the flute, which I still don't know why it exists and it's, it's, and it's another item that should just get completely removed from the entire game because it's completely outclassed by the calling horn which is unlimited in range whereas this is 500 units we have wharf slots you won't really need them because there are not that many ships that you might even want unless you want to build your own navy you will not need this we have a storage in your residence so access it remotely but you still need to go to your residence so like maybe if you just want to do alchemy or cooking all day and you don't want to spend the 30 seconds that it takes to walk down from heidel 95 house to the storage keeper and back sure but you can still get this for contribution so don't buy this do not buy this we have revival for your mounts just go to the storage keeper, it's not going to save you that much time. You can also get this for, a lo for a loyalties if you really just need to revive your mount for some reason. We have energy potions, once again you can get this for loyalties much easier and much cheaper. And you can buy this for silver and you can even make them yourself. You really don't need this. We have the fairy tier that lets you revive. You will be swimming in these and you, there is also a skill on the ferry that gives this to you for free. You don't need to buy this at all, at all. If you keep dying so much to the point where you don't have more tears, it's just skill issue and you should go grind somewhere else, okay? We have the megaphones, which just let you shamelessly plug your Twitch channel or your guild or just be a, a meme on the world channel otherwise it doesn't do anything else some of you who maybe played metin 2 will remember that this existed there as well and it was just as useless there as well we have the exp transfer coupons you don't need them just don't buy them just level the characters yourself and you can just get juices from your guild if you are in one which you should be we have the exp bonus scrolls which have been outclassed by the scrolls we get for free so you really don't need to buy them we have the Tears of the Falling Star or something like that, which uh, restore your sailor if he gets sick. You can buy the same item that does the same thing for a couple of million silver from the central market. Do not buy this either, especially when it costs $5. We have the Marni fuel that lets you copy one item on your tagged character. You can get free Marni's fuel that will allow you to copy every single item in the game for free don't buy this especially not at ten dollars or a thousand pearls we have the thing that will let you reset your fairy just get a new fairy don't buy this especially for ten dollars we have the skill preset uh, that will allow you to get more skill presets i don't know why you would really need more maybe if you really feel like you just need more skill presets you can buy this but it's really not worth the money same for the pets there are tiny bonuses that the pets give like up to like single digit bonuses in 
EXP, if you really want to min-max EXP at any point, sure, but for a normal player, you don't need to buy this. We have the bag that I don't even know why exists. Before I made this video, I didn't even know that this was a thing, which pretty much tells you all you need to know about this, and it tells you that you should not buy this under any circumstance. We have the apparel bag, which does the same thing, and you can even get this one for free. And we have the two scrolls that give you stats. This one gives you 100 HP, this one gives you 100 MP, and both of them are completely worthless. And that is it. That's, that's all of the Pearl Shop items. I might be missing some. I know that I am missing the other one for auto fishing time which I would put at specific and decent value, if you ask me. So imagine there is a cute otter staring at, at you right here. I think that's the only other item that I have forgotten. I did not include underwear as well. Underwear would be all cosmetics, okay? Underwear would be cosmetics. You can argue that you buy it for one luck, but at that point you are just coping, okay? We know why you buy underwear. You don't have to lie to us. You can pre-order the other from the marketplace. That is true as well. That is true as well. Yeah, thank you, Tosa. Yeah. So, in that case, it's gonna go to, sp to bad value. The other. The other will go to, to specific value. Wagon skins. I've looked at the wagon skins. I would put wagon skins at, co at cosmetic. I would put wagon skins at cosmetic. They give you... They give you 1% movement speed. 60 weight. And I think 5% chance to not not destroy your item which it doesn't matter because trading doesn't exist all right handsome that is it for this video i hope you enjoyed this do let me know if you like this kind of content it's a little bit different it's unscripted so it's harder for me to get my words out because english is not my first language but i hope you enjoyed it nonetheless again this was a remaster or a remake of an older video it's actually the first video that i made which is why i'm doing it like this i don't want to make the same video twice but i thought that the first video was basically a disaster and i wanted to make at least something else so thank you for watching remember to like and subscribe do let me know if you agree or disagree with any of these items and what you would put them in and enjoy your grind